Good morning and welcome to this celebration of the Lord's Supper, the Holy Eucharist, the Sunday service for St. Mary's Church here in Aylesbury. My name is Father Doug Zimmerman. I'm the rector here and I welcome you to join with us this morning as we celebrate. I would invite you to make yourself comfortable, grab something to drink, pull up, warm up your fingers for the chat on the keyboard. Hopefully you have been able to sign in so that you can uh, join that chat. Otherwise, be at peace, relax. I want to take just a very quick moment to dedicate this service in thanksgiving for the ministry of Mike Doe, our longtime, very diligent, very attentive, brilliant sacristan who is moving down uh, to be with family down in the south of the country. And so we want to give thanks to God Almighty for his ministry here. Mike, you will be sorely missed, but continue to be dearly loved. So, as we gather, our opening hymn is number 623, I Come With Joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. The first reading is taken from Genesis, chapter 14, verses 17 to 20. And after his return from the defeat of Kedor Laoma and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him one-tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus 
is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you please stand for the proclamation of the gospel? The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there, there were six stone water jars, for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who drew the water had known. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please welcome with me our preacher this morning, Mr. John Bush. Thank you, John. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. What did you do over the Christmas holiday? Did you go to London to see a pantomime? Did you go to Milton Keynes or London to the Christmas sales? Not this year, I'm sure. Were you lonelier than usual this Christmas? Perhaps you were glued more to the television, or did you sit around the table with your family or in your bubble and play Monopoly or Scrabble or such games as the Settlers of Catan or Mind the Gap, which seem to be favourites of the young people in my family at the moment? So certainly this Christmas was different. We couldn't do what we would usually do. It wasn't quite the same 
as in previous years. Most years nowadays, the opportunities of things to do in the Christmas holiday are limitless. In this 21st century, we usually have so much choice. There are many different types of entertainment. We can easily reach, usually, places that are thousands of miles away, and we can take our pick of any entertainment we fancy. But it hasn't always been like that. In towns and villages in England a hundred years ago, almost all entertainment would have been local and would have probably been focused on the church, which would have been the focal point of the area, to meet week by week. Almost all social entertainment would have been through the church, and such things as the Sunday school outing and the summer fete would be the highlights of the year. In the days of Jesus in the first century, entertainment would have been even more local and homegrown. A wedding was such a cause of social pleasure and interaction that it lasted for a week or more and was attended by the whole village. A wedding was regarded as an important contract and as such was a terrific occasion of rejoicing and fun. It would have required months of preparation, just like today, and it was so important in the life of the village that Jesus performed his first miracle at a wedding by changing water into wine. So his first miracle had nothing to do with serious things like healing people or feeding people or preaching to them, but was purely to do with people's enjoyment. Although, as there's no account of the institution of the Eucharist in John's Gospel, many scholars see this account of the changing of water into wine as an early introduction by John of the symbolism of Holy Communion. A wedding was the pinnacle of entertainment and pleasure. There was nothing better than a wedding feast where all the guests could eat and drink their fill and enjoy each other's company. Jesus, as a country person brought up in a village or small town, often used the illustration of a banquet when speaking about the kingdom of God. These similes of the wedding banquet are picked up and expanded in the book of Revelation. In today's reading, the writer sees Jesus as the bridegroom and the church as the bride. Christians were known as saints, and the saints are seen in this reading as taking the major part in the great feast, along with Jesus. Jesus is the groom, and they are the bride. They have been given fine clothes to wear at the feast, and the writer spells out just what these clothes are. They are the righteous act of the saints. Jesus is also seen as the divine lamb, a perfect and unblemished sacrifice which offers a perfect way for human beings to return to full communion with God. In the old days before Jesus, if people had sinned or were ritually unclean, or needed to communicate with God in some way, they made a sacrifice. Jesus, as the Lamb, is seen as the perfect sacrifice to restore a perfect relationship with, between God and human beings. And the wedding day of the Lamb cements this new relationship into a binding contract between God and his people. The wedding day is an indication that God's reign, rather than the reign of evil, is about to begin. Marriage is used throughout the Old Testament as a metaphor to describe 
the covenant relationship between God and his people. And the breakdown of that covenant relationship is therefore often seen as adultery or harlotry. The wedding feast of the Lamb is the final culmination of that long-standing covenant relationship between God and human beings, finishing forever any need for adultery or prostitution. When the author of Revelation realizes the amazing truth that human beings are welcome to this wonderful feast on an equal footing with Christ himself, the author falls at the feet of the angel who has revealed this to him. But the angel reinforces the truth that the author can scarcely gasp. Don't worship me, says the angel. You and I are equal in status. I'm no more important than you are. The angel goes on to add that just as the prophets of old were inspired to proclaim the word of God, so Christians are called to witness to Christ. This truth holds good for all Christians for all time. It's one of the promises of God, and as such can be relied upon with utter confidence. All of us, no matter how sinful, no matter how unworthy, no matter how inadequate, have a place at the top table in the kingdom of heaven. And not just a place, but the place. We are the bride. Christ is the bridegroom. After death, we will be there with him in paradise, sharing his table, sharing top honours, sharing his food and his life. And prior to death, we can still share in the kingdom of heaven. All we have to do to enjoy the kingdom right now is to believe in Jesus and to witness to him. And that will bring us to a feast such as we could never imagine. Will you please stand as we proclaim our faith? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring ourselves, our souls and bodies, the church and the whole world before God in prayer. Almighty God, today finds us in the midst of the week of prayer for Christian unity. Help us to listen to your voice still calling us to unity in our diversity. 
We pray for church leaders everywhere that they may work together and promote unity among Christians. Lord, you made us to be one body and of one spirit, and so we pray that we might establish friendly relations among Jews, Christians and Muslims and tear down the walls of indifference and hatred by making our unity visible and bringing healing to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for all who work for justice and solidarity and for all world leaders that they will continue to seek for an end to the suffering caused by war and violence, injustice and inequality, disease and prejudice, poverty and hopelessness and bring healing to the world. Tina Beatty prayed for Joe Biden this week and I use her prayer now and she said, I pray that as President Joe Biden will bring healing to the people of the United States by seeking the tranquility of order out of the bitter recent conflicts in America. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, as we remember the presence of your son Jesus Christ at the wedding at, at Cana, we pray for all that we know who are preparing for marriage and those who are beginning their married life together. And at this time, those who've had to put their marriage plans on hold because of the pandemic. May they experience the love of God, the support of family and friends. We also pray for any that we know amongst our families and friends who are experiencing marital problems, that they may find a way forward through their present difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we raise before you this, this morning those who are sick and, or sad or lonely, and those who are brave and patient when things are going wrong. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. We pray especially for those we have on our prayer list, Kirsty and Isabel, Valerie, Dan, Jack, Helen, Julian, Tina, Peter Atkinson, Doris, Sonra, Mark and Sally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those who have departed this life and ask you through your loving kindness to have mercy on their souls be with the bereaved in their loneliness and give them the faith to look beyond their present troubles to your Son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again and who lives forevermore. We pray for Liz Sharp and Sheila Hodgson, who died this week. We pray for Neil and Ian and all the Hodgson family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we prepare for the weeks ahead, week ahead, help us to remember that we are sisters and brothers in Christ. Help us to overcome our conflicts, our divisions and our self-seeking and to be united to one another by the power of the Holy Spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people of his own. Therefore, let us confess our sins. Praying together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Savior Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Please share in the chat or the comments below the peace of the Lord. God bless you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us, in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise.
How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners. And with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, Form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Let us pray with confidence, as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Will you pray with me now, making your act of spiritual communion? My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. If you have received spiritually the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ through this spiritual communion, would you please put in the chat or in an email or calling the office to let us know so that we might rejoice in you and in this Holy Communion. Our choir will now offer O Taste and See.
Almighty Father, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As we come to our notices, I just want to make sure that you are aware that we are maintaining our open for private prayer, meditation, for headspace, uh, while we are being asked to remain at home. Uh, it is uh, with great delight that uh, we are able to be open for those that really, for their own well-being, need to be able to come into the church, to be in the presence of God's sanctuary. And so if you are aware of somebody that is really struggling uh, and they just need to come and pray uh, between nine o'clock and noon, Monday through Friday, we will be delighted to be there to welcome them or you. Uh, again, the construction is continuing. We are making great progress around the windows uh, at height inside the nave. And uh, I invite you to continue to watch our Facebook page. Um, or if you happen to be out on an essential journey, um, have a look and see if you can see it from around the church. I can tell you it's not very visible from the ground. May God bless you richly. The Lord be with you and also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and with the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 338, At the Name of Jesus. Jesus.